ready to wind our motor that's been lubricated. The easiest way to do this is to attach the motor to the propeller just by sliding the, the rubber loop or the o-ring if you're using o-rings onto the hook. But once you get it attached to the airplane you need an assistant to hold the airplane and the propeller while you wind it up. There are instructions that come with the Alpha kit that show you a diagram of a little wooden what we call a stooge that you can actually wind the motor by yourself by having two vertical columns, I think they use nails, that you can hook the propeller in and pull against it to wind the motor. Since this is a team sport and it takes you have two people on the team anyway, you have an assistant to hold the airplane. And just hold it, just squeeze the front of the stick, capture the propeller inside your hand so it will not turn. Oops, I told you I couldn't hold on to anything. Now, take your winder, hook it in the other end of the motor. We want to stretch the rubber motor. Actually, we get the power from the stretch. When we wind the motor, we're actually stretching the rubber. And rubber is an elastomer. One of the properties of an elastomer is if it's deformed, it always wants to go back to its original state. So we stretch the rubber. We actually wind it. The wind sort of lock in the stretch because if we didn't wind it, as soon as we came back to the airplane, the motor would go back. But with it wound up, it can't release that energy until it spins the propeller. So really, the power comes from the stretch, not from the winds. So stretch it. This rubber, uh, there's only one rubber made in the world for, specifically for flying model airplanes. And this is the TAN 2 Super Sport, or the TAN Super Sport that's in, in your kit. If you buy any rubber from any of the other vendors, it's going to be the very same rubber. Uh, so, <clears throat> this uh, Super Sport rubber can stretch 8 to 10 times its original length. So, you can stretch it very hard and it's not going to break. What causes a rubber motor to break is some nick. If you, you're familiar with plastic, anytime you get nick in a plastic, it just rips. Usually that comes from a dirty motor because all it takes is one grain of sand trapped in this motor when you stretch it tight and that little grain of silicone cuts the motor and breaks. That's generally what happens. So now I'll stretch the motor, get it stretched out nice and start winding. This winder is a 20 to 1 ratio which means for every time I crank the winder the motor is wound 20 turns. The 2 gram motor for this airplane with this 332nd size rubber will probably take anywhere from 1500 to 1800 turns. So I could actually crank it 90 times here to equal 1800. Probably would not wind it that hard, especially in a school gym because it's going to bounce off the ceiling. So, wind up your motor, count, count your cranks so that you can uh, keep track of how many turns is in it. And I will not wind it up completely tight in this demonstration. But when you start to get toward the end of your wind, you want to start walking in toward the airplane as you wind. And what this does is it allows you to get a few more turns in the motor without actually increasing the stress on the motor. Okay, so ba basically I'm back to where I want to be because right here is the hook. 
take the motor off of your winder, and again, this is where the O-rings come in handy. You may be able to see with that O-ring, I still have it open. If I had just the end of the rubber, you can see how tight that is wound together. Very, very hard to hold on to. Very hard to get a hole to put on the loop. The O-rings actually make a nice handle to hold on to. With this rubber lubricant on my fingers right now, without this O-ring to hold on to, the motor would slide right through my hands. Then just hook it on the rear hook, and I'll take the airplane. We now have a wound motor loaded on the airplane, and the airplane is ready to fly. And we'll cover that in the next segment.